Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico is in stable condition after surgery. Recall the 59-year-old populist, pro-Russia leader was shot multiple times as he greeted people in the town of Handlova, in an attack some of his allies linked to the country's stark political polarization. After being treated briefly at a local hospital, Fico was airlifted to Banska Bystrica Hospital where he was seen being carried on a gurney. Fortunately as far as I know the operation went well, and I guess in the end he will survive, Deputy Prime Minister Tomas Taraba told the BBC after Fico underwent more than four hours of surgery. He's not in a life-threatening situation at this moment. Taraba said one bullet went through Fico's stomach and a second hit a joint, leaving the Prime Minister in what was previously described as a very critical situation. The attack has been classified as a politically motivated assassination attempt, according to Slovak Interior Minister Matis Sutaji Stok. The assassination attempt on FICO is the first on a European national leader since 2003, when Serbian Prime Minister Zoran Džinjic was killed. While FICO undergoes treatment after the assassination attempt, he was shot at five times, the gunman involved in the crime has been detained, and was later identified by local media to be 71-year-old Uri Sinchula, a government critic and poet who once founded a campaign group against violence. Fico's tenure has been marked by his pro-Russian stance amid the Ukraine conflict, something that has stirred debate. Notably, Slovakia is a member of both NATO and the European Union. F-16s for Ukraine, the instructor pilot said when fighters will be able to enter Crimea. After complete clearance of Russian air defense systems and radio technical troops, F-16 fighters, which Ukraine will soon receive, will be able to operate in the temporarily occupied Crimea. This opinion was shared by military expert, instructor pilot and reserve colonel of the armed forces of Ukraine, Roman Svitan. The first task of any aircraft that enter fighters is to gain superiority in the air. It begins with the destruction of the enemy's air defense, radar systems and anti-aircraft missile systems. This can be done even before the aircraft themselves enter. This is what we are seeing now. Strikes for enemy air defense. This is precisely preparation for the entry of fighters who will then continue to clear the space with the help of anti-location missiles and work against enemy aircraft, he said on the Kiev 24 TV channel. The expert noted that for such attacks, missiles transferred to Ukraine are most likely used ATA CMS, Storm Shadow and Scalp can reach Ipetri. Of the Ukrainian missiles, Neptune can reach there, Svitan added. This range allows us to eliminate Russian air defense. After the Russians have been completely cleared of air defense systems and radio technical troops, it will be possible to operate aviation in Crimea. It will even be possible to go there. The combat radius of these aircraft allows us to carry out this task, Roman Svitan summed up. F-16 fighters from Denmark will be at the disposal of the Ukrainian Air Force within a month. This was announced by Prime Minister Met Frederiksen. Denmark planned to send 19 such aircraft to Ukraine. Defense expert and analyst at the Hague Center for Strategic Studies, Frederik Mertens, believes that the supply of these fighters could play a decisive role in Ukraine's attempts to return occupied Crimea. The peninsula will become especially vulnerable after Ukraine receives these fighters. An economist leads army. New York Times revealed what tasks were set for Russian defense minister. For Vladimir Putin, the appointment of a new defense minister is new building material for waging a long war. Economist Andrei Belosov, appearing in public for the first time as head of the Ministry of Defense, spoke about bureaucracy, not about the battlefield, writes the New York Times. Journalists say it signals a recognition that the military production that fuels Russia's war and fuels the Russian economy must be carefully managed to withstand a war of attrition. At the same time, Russia is playing a long game on the battlefield. Belusov noted the bureaucratic details of the fast-growing military effort and made no reference to the situation at the front. He said his priority was improving the standards of care and living standards for soldiers, veterans and their families. The excessive paperwork that soldiers face when receiving benefits, he said, should be resolved within the framework of interdepartmental electronic coordination.
The authors point out that such statements were a striking example of how the sudden rise of a taciturn economic policy expert at the head of a vast military apparatus became a new component of Putin's strategy to defeat Ukraine and the West in a war of attrition. The article indicates that Putin is focused on subordinating the country's economy to his military needs, counting on the fact that a war in Ukraine or at least a militarized confrontation with the West could determine Russia's future for years to come. Putin's priority is war, and the war of attrition is won by the economy, said Alexander Prokopenko, a former Russian central banker who now works at the Carnegie Eurasia Center in Berlin. During his more than six years as Putin's economic advisor, Belosov gained a reputation as a staunch supporter of the dominant role of the state in the economy and high government spending. The appointment of a methodical bureaucrat to oversee Russia's war effort also coincides with the consolidation of Russia's slower strategy on the battlefield. Failed attempts to overwhelm the enemy in the first month of the 2022 invasion with armored strikes and landings have given way to a systematic breakdown of Ukrainian defenses along much of the front. This strategy allowed the Russian Federation to use its superiority in manpower and firepower to gradually advance against Ukraine's overstretched and exhausted defenders.